The following program is a presentation of BaseNet Internet Television, bringing you topics in the way mainstream media won't. BaseNet Internet Television presents As We See It with Fred Boaz and Friends. In Los Angeles, I'm Gene White. And now, to our studios in Boston. Hello, everybody, and Happy New Year, and welcome to a brand new season, a new year on As We See It. This is our first podcast of 2012. We're recording today on Tuesday, January 3rd, as we had some technical issues on Sunday, so we're running a couple days late. But before we move ahead with the show and introduce everybody on the panel today, I'd like to go over a little base net programming information to bring everybody up to date. I'm going to steal a little bit of Holly's thunder here, but she'll be going into some more details anyway. Our new programming schedule starting over the next few weeks will be Sundays will be as we see it day. So you'll continue to enjoy or not enjoy this podcast on Sundays. On Wednesday, we will have our political podcast viewpoint. And on Fridays, starting in about two weeks, will be our new podcast, the Crashing Glass podcast, of which Holly will tell us all about in a minute. So we will now have our programming schedule expanded to three days a week. Around Easter, we will have a fourth podcast, so we'll be up to four days a week programming by Easter. This is really exciting. Uh, We're also looking to expand our video programs. Since we are based at Internet Television, we're going to look to... Uh, bring more video programs back into play since a lot of people do obviously also enjoy video. So we're going to have a full table here of both audio and video programming coming to you over the next couple of months. So with us today, we have Fred Boaz in the Pocono Mountains in Pennsylvania because as usual, I assume he doesn't really get out of the house much, so he's probably still there. Holly is back in St. Louis from her trip to Texas. And then we have Larry the Lobster in Brookline, Mass. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy Happy New Year. Year. Happy New Year. Holly, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about your new venture and then we'll let Fred get our show started. Well, Ed, I'm actually really excited about this. Um, Myself and uh, Jill Henley Lawrence, who is one of our other esteemed on-air personalities here on uh, BaseNet Internet Television, are going to be heading up a show called Crashing Glass Podcast, or The Crashing Glass Podcast. And uh, essentially, it's going to be she and I, and we're going to have a rotating uh, group of professionals coming in to talk about different subjects. Uh, Our first topic is going to be New Year's resolutions and how to stick to those. Pretty much everything from whether or not you're trying to get healthy for the New Year's. We're going to have a a exercise physiology specialist on the show. Her name is Laura Wilson, and she's going to be joining us. And so if there's anything you really wanted to accomplish this New Year, please feel free to email in your New Year's resolutions to BaseNet, and we'll see if we can address them on the show. Excellent. And that email is info at basenetintermedia.com, or you could contact us on our social media. On Twitter, we're BaseNet TV. On Facebook, we are BaseNet. And on Google+, Plus, we are BaseNet Internet Television. And Holly, I guess you wouldn't mind people contacting you directly either, correct? Oh, absolutely not. Feel free to email in. Uh, I'm on Twitter at at where it bright. Um, Jill's also on Twitter. Hers, I believe, is jhenleyl. Um, and then uh, you can also find me on Facebook at Holly Hurley Feather. Fred, get us started Ew. here. I'm ready to go. The first topic up today is the fact that a guy in... Uh, I believe, believe with North Carolina, got tagged by the police for trying to buy $475 worth of merchandise from Walmart with a million-dollar bill. Yeah, a million-dollar bill. And this guy swore and insisted that it was legitimate. I saw pictures on Facebook today. Somebody posted a photo of the million-dollar bill. And, you know, you can get these things in, in, in a lot of stores around, but the United States government does not ma- does not make any bills higher than a hundred dollars. We have uh, ones, twos, five, tens, twenties, fifties, and hundreds. There were higher denominations at one time. They stopped making those in the mid 1860s, and they were only used for interbank transactions. But since we now have electronic transactions, those bills are no longer needed, so they're out of circulation, and they are illegal to ho- that, that, that if you had them, they would be illegal to own. I believe the biggest I've ever seen or held personally. It was probably 
myself as opposed to business wise i believe it was one of those times when you know you're buying a new car or a, a used car for 500 bucks or something and you go to the bank and uh this was probably back in the late 70s and i remember having a 500 dollars bill uh so that was probably before they did away with them obviously well they th that would have been around the era in which they actually did away with banks were no longer able to give those out because they were all recalled and it's because of the electronic transfers that started in the, in the, in the mid and early and mid 1980s that the larger bills were no longer needed for large capital transactions of because they did have a ten thousand dollar bill and a hundred thousand dollar bill but there were only three hundred of, uh, of those ever made so having those kind of bills is, is impractical now and with the electronic transfer take what took days now takes seconds and you can do for any any amount of money you want you know, there's no need for those bills so they have been recalled but and people, you know, so these bills are fake. But there, there are stories out there of people going in with two hundred dollar bills and making, and, and, and making purchases and actually getting change for them. So there are a lot of people are not educated. Uh, as and also what, like, that uh, there, there's also that non politically correct queer three dollar bill also, right? Right. Well, it's called the, the statement is queer is a three dollar bill, and a lot of people don't know that back in the 1850s. Before the nationalization of the banking system under the Federal Reserve, some states and many banks issued their own currency. And at one time, one of the banks, even called the St. Nicholas Bank of New York, issued a $3 bill with a picture of Santa Claus on it. So $3 bills at one time did exist. I have never seen one. I've seen a picture of one at one time. But these bills are no longer existent today. I think they've been recalled and destroyed by now, and they're probably in collector's items. So do we know what happened to this guy that tried passing this million-dollar bill? I don't know. I, I've been trying to find out some stories. I haven't been able to locate anything on it. He's actually, it looks like he's scheduled to be in court today. So we'll find oh, something okay. out maybe this week and follow up with it. Uh, there on we go. Sunday. Maybe Sunday we could talk about it. There you you know, when we, when we first talked about this story, Fred, when you sent it to us uh, for the show, I thought to myself, oh, how ridiculous. But you know what's strange? I actually just today, this is fortuitous, tried to deposit a $100 bill that my grandfather gave me like two, you know, probably like 20 years ago. You know, it was found in my grandmother's house after she died. And um, and I thought to myself, and I couldn't get it to go into the machine. The machine wouldn't take it. Yeah, because it's the old style bill. Exactly. So, I mean, you know, I guess money changes pretty fast. and well, money has changed. Fast, but, you know, I mean, it's sure, not... Sure, it's a changed within the past five years, even. So, yeah, I know specifically the old bills you're talking about. Uh, they're completely different than what they are now. Oh, yeah, big time. And also, you got to remember, at one time, they had silver certificates, which were blue seals. They had gold certificates. Even, right. even when, the, when Hawaii became a state, they had special money with brown seals that were Hawaiian dollars that were only good in Hawaii before it actually became a state. Yeah, I was going to say, even the silver certificates were in issue up until the early 60s or so. So, and a lot of these are collector's items are only worth the face value, many of them, but, or they're worth whatever somebody's willing to pay for it, but as far as legal tender, they are legal tender, and many of them, if you look on a bill today, it says Federal Reserve Note. Silver certificates never said that. They said silver certificate. Right. And they were payable to the bearer in silver upon demand. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Very interesting. Uh, why don't we move along? Well, speaking of interesting stories, I love this one uh, from this week, the top 10 most ridiculous lawsuits from 2011. As we move into 2012, hopefully we can say goodbye to incidences like these. And, uh, I mean, there are some really good ones on here. I, I think my favorite is the obese man sues burger joint over tight squeeze in booths. But, I mean, there, there are some real doozies. How about the kid sues the mother, the, the parents for presents because she showed favorites? Oh, yeah, that one's fantastic. You know, oh, Mom, you like her better than me. I'm going to sue you for that. You and know, then, of course, oh, go ahead, Ed. No, go ahead. And then, of course, you know, well, I was just going to move on to the one about the woman who sued over a movie trailer because she said there wasn't enough mo uh, driving in the movie Drive. Yeah, and that was my point, that other than that one and maybe one or two of the others, this whole list wasn't all that ridiculous to me. Um... I could see some some ambulance chaser type attorney saying, hey, you know, there's a potential buck to be made in these, and what have I got to lose by pursuing a lawsuit here? Uh, so just playing devil's advocate, as I like to do, some of these aren't maybe quite as ridiculous as they are just on a first-hand look. 
Well, sure, but you know, there's one here where a woman disagreed with a store of her eighty of an eighty cent refund, and so she sued the store for five million dollars. That's so ridiculous. Maybe they should pay her in the million dollars that guy tried to spend it. What? Once. Whoa! Huh. Go back here. She's tried suing for five million dollars over an eighty cent refund. That is correct, sir. <laughs> now there's a, there's a ridiculous one. What's that? Do we have details on this? Um, well, I mean, it came from the Business News Daily, so all, the only detail I have is that that would be, I mean, you know, that'd be correct as far as their sources are concerned, but I'm, I mean, I'm assuming she went and tried to buy something and said that it was, she found it for 80 cents less somewhere else or something like that, and then just ended up, you know. See, no, there's, there's a case, that's ridiculous. Could you imagine them marching into court somewhere and saying, we're filing this, 500, this $5 million lawsuit because uh, you didn't give us our 80 cents back or whatever the case well, is. Well, the thing is, most of these uh, have been filed. That's why they're on this list. That's right. These have probably already been filed, I'm going to assume, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, maybe she uh, spent an hour arguing with a guy and she thinks her time is her worth, time's worth $5 million, million an, hour. an hour. Well, if she could prove that she her salary is $5 million an hour, she's got herself a case, I guess. I'll tell you right now, I'll slap her for a buck and a half. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who are we slapping next? Oh, Casey Anthony. Oh, here we go. She's no. back in the news, oh, as it see. I'm the I'm the one that stirred up the pot this week. I found this story. Well, uh, yes, you do. Oh, go for it, please. Oh, no, no. I wasn't meaning I need to lead on it. I'm just saying I found the story. Basically, what happened is uh, uh, a judge in the case said that uh, she cannot be required to discuss the issues behind the case or answer questions about what ultimately did happen to Kaylee. Um, she can't be grilled about saying, come on, Casey, you know, what really happened to your daughter or something. She does not have to answer any questions about this case. She was found not guilty. You know, it's whatever's happening in the civil then now, that's a civil and that's monetary issues. That's not criminal issues. Um, you know, wash their hands of the uh, criminal liability here now. And this judge said that she does not need to comment about the case, period. Well, the interesting thing about that is, you know, I, I sort of feel for the other side on this one in a way because, you know, apparently when the when Casey went missing, uh, basically, or sorry, when Kaylee, Kaylee went missing, Casey said that it was a nanny named uh, Zenaida, I'm probably going to butcher this, named Zenaida Fernandez. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, we could rip, and, uh, I'm not going to stop you and prevent you from saying it, but yeah, obviously, you know, we could rip apart the court case. There were so many inconsistencies on her part. That's why so many people about think that. she's... This, that what I'm interested in is that this is this woman is saying is basically suing for defamation, which is you know libel. She's basically right, saying right. that Casey said that Casey, and this is true. This was this woman's lifeblood, and even if it was proven during the case that it wasn't her that did it, she'll never have a career as a nanny again. No, just of course for not. Having been mentioned in this case, because you because know, what if you know? You, so you wouldn't want her as a nanny. What if? That's okay. She'll make some money off. She'll make money off a lawsuit. She'll write a book. She'll make a lot of money off of it. Well, so the problem you don't need is, it. is maybe the book she could make money on, but the lawsuit, the problem is, is that they're saying that Casey Anthony can plead the fifth on this entire lawsuit and that everything that happened in her court case can basically be, per, I mean, I, I'm, I'm assuming the motion that's being made here is that everything that happened in Casey Anthony's court case cannot be used in Ms. Gonzalez's court case. So do, so, do you guys uh, side with the judge or against the judge? And then let's uh, somehow bring uh, Larry the Lobster into Well, let Larry too. start with what he has to say. We'll, see what the, we'll, we'll tear him apart. I mean, we'll, we'll listen to what he has to say. <laughs> go, go ahead, Larry. Yeah, well... I really don't expect to be torn apart by what I'm about to say because okay, the only thing that I'm going to say is I know she was found not guilty of murder, but I still feel that she is guilty of lying to the police and she should be charged with that. Because well, isn't isn't that what she was charged with ultimately? Charged with ultimately? I don't know if she was ever charged with it, but... Yeah, because she, she had her... Um, what was it, she, two, she was or th two or three misdemeanors or whatever? Uh, you know, that that's what her jail time was ultimately about then when she did time served. I believe the, uh, the, lying, the lying to the law enforcement authorities was the reason, was what she was charged with or what she was found guilty of. 
She was found yeah, not guilty of. For that. Yeah, she was found not guilty of murder, but I believe at least one of the charges, and she might have been found guilty on even three charges, from what I remember now. Uh, they were misdemeanor charges, but one of them was lying to law enforcement. So she was found guilty of that. So, so what do you other guys think then as far as siding with the judge or whatever in this thought? Well, I mean, but here is my question, you know, just, I agree, you know, absolutely. If she didn't, if she didn't commit murder, or if she's found innocent, I mean, that's, that is. Or whether she did or didn't, but there was the wait, reasonable wait, wait, doubt, wait, wait, wait. right? She wasn't Correct. found innocent, she was found not guilty. Not guilty, but terms. because, yeah. because of. You know, I mean, it's safe to say that the jury decided that because of the reasonable doubt clause. Right. Well, so, okay, so let's say she, she has been found not guilty. So the, the problem here is that this is now affecting her lying, as, as you know, as, as Larry talked about, is now affecting this other woman's life. I mean, that's her livelihood. She can't make any money now. She may, she may have other problems related to this. And, and I don't know. I mean, I think there should be some level at which this woman is entitled to some level of retribution if she was obviously, and I believe they did find this during the court case, that she had nothing to do with this. Well, so because she's never going to be able to work again. No, so yeah, can't she... Civil, can't, a civil suit anyway. Yeah, I was just going to say that, Fred. So can't she win, potentially win a civil monetary suit against Casey and Casey still doesn't have to... If she chose to not talk about specifics? Well, the problem Absolutely. Is Absolutely. The they can use the transcripts of the trial and they can prove no, their they point can't. that That's way. The point. No, That's you can't the point. use that. No, what the, what the judge ruled was that everything from Kaylee's case has to be excluded from this trial. And yeah, this you can't trial. use that. Yeah, so if they can't use anything from the case at all, that goes all that there goes everything in conjunction with because Kaylee lied during the trial, or Casey lied during the trial. So. So, you know, so basically all of the proof, it, which is, you know, which is in these court records is completely omitted. So I know I don't think she can win this case without that because it took place in the court of law, which now the judge has ruled that not only, you know, you know, not only did they deny that request, but they said that anything indirect directly related to the case is out. Hey, Fred, make a phone call to your uh, prosecution uh uh, or uh, defense attorney buddy Ron Kuby and get him on the show. Let him. Let's get well, his I'd opinion. I'd love to get him on. I'd love to get him <laughs> in. On this. We we really should look into a uh, trying to find an attorney. I mean, we all know one or two. Maybe we could find an attorney to get on uh, on the show and give us a little uh, you know legal expertise outlook on this. I think that'd be really interesting. And uh, speaking of people being uh, apprehended, apparently they finally caught the L.A. arsonist. Um, and his name is Harry Burkhart, and his mother is claiming he is mentally ill, and that perhaps what set off this rampage was her pending deportation, and that therefore he should not be charged for all of these fires. And it looks like since they've gotten him that in this case they probably did get their man because there haven't been, not to say that there haven't been any fires in L.A., but there haven't been any of this type of fire in L.A. since they arrested him. And there's a good story behind the uh, arresting officer as well. Now that one, I, that one, I I would like for you guys to share with me because I I didn't get to I really didn't get the backstory on okay, this the back. the arrest the arresting officer is a what they call a reserve deputy sheriff in the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. It's more or less a volunteer, like you know you could join your police reserve, or your volunteer fire department, that type of thing. It's basically an unpaid position, but he gets a um, token salary of a dollar a year for providing this service as a reserve deputy sheriff and he was the arresting officer he um, recognized this guy's van uh, as being the van that was wanted in conjunction with these fires he um, actuated the traffic stop on this van and along with the LAPD they arrested this guy um, I believe this officer, by birth or by heritage, is Iranian or something. So there's really, you know, you can find this just by Googling it. You'll get the whole story. It's all over the news. This is just really a cool story just about this arresting officer itself to where he's not a full-time police officer. Um, you know, he's an Iranian or, you know, a Middle Easterner anyway. Um, and it, it's 
just so cool. And But it looks like they did get their guy because these types of fires have not happened in the past two days since he's been in custody. Well, the mother's a wacko, too. I mean, she's sitting there claiming that, the, that it's the German Nazis, that, that the uh, German Nazis know their address, and the German government complaining about backing the oh arrest boy. warrant. I mean, it, it's just, it, 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 this whole family's just, it, 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 just it's whacked out. And I guess L.A. is a good place for them, though, because, you know. Well, but, so it's just good if they did get the guy because th there, was, there were some 30-plus fires over the course of two weeks. Well, and, you know, speaking of crazy people and fires going out in L.A., womp, 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 it looks like Katy Perry and Russell Brand are kaputs. Oh, my oh, God. To the surprise of no one. There goes another Hollywood marriage. Yeah, know, like, like, like anybody, you know, like, you know. Well, you know, now you know. A big, there's a big surprise. Well, I would love for you guys to weigh in on this because the big scandal about this one is, you know, they didn't sign a prenup, and apparently Katie made forty million this year while Russell only made fifteen. So, you know, I was watching uh, one of the caddy. Wait a second. There's, there's no there. such thing as only in fifteen million. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. True. Like, oh, well, and you know, they were arguing like lividly about should he get a portion of this, and I'm like, yeah. I mean, I don't care if he helped her earn it. I don't care if it's common property. You didn't sign a prenup. You're talking about $20 million in conjunction. I mean, so if you guys go halvesies on the money, you know, really, when you're talking in double-digit millions, does it matter, first of all? And second of all, you know, they filed for irreconcilable differences. And, you know, I, I think, you know, he was married to her for the year, so, you know, or for how many months? Yeah, and how, how many times have... Fred, you've heard me say, you know, if you gave me a million dollars, just one million dollars, I could live off the interest of that every year for the rest of my life and never touch the principal. Hey, the just give me the interest the every year. You know, so even if you just give me the interest on one million dollars every year, I'll certainly live comfortable I mean, for the I rest of my I life. Remember, uh, a story That's a ton of money. Where Joanna Carson had gone on to a game, uh, a, a, a talk show. That was Johnny's, <laughs> what, uh, 15th wife? Well, yeah, whatever. Anyway, but what, what, uh, where he, where she said that she was making alimony of fifty thousand dollars a month, right. and she couldn't make ends meet. Yeah, I remember and that. A woman, and a woman in the audience stood up and said, "Excuse me, Joanna, I'll tell you what. You give me one alimony payment, I'll show you how to stretch it for a year." So you know, it, it goes to show you how ridiculous this kind of stuff really is. Well, but here's my question: Do you guys think you should get it or no? Yeah, they were they were married. Share and share alike. I like it. Okay. Sure, why not? Oh, I like it. That's so oh, yeah. kind of you guys. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you no, what. No, because, well, you know, I'll it's, it's not always the woman getting screwed. The guy gets screwed here every now and then as well. Sure. I'll tell you what. Well, I'll settle with this. Why don't I send a quarter of what she made and a quarter he made the base that helps support us? I think that sounds like an excellent plan. And while, and while we're looking for support, anybody that's interested, you could go to basenettv.com, click on the Google checkout link there, and for as little as a dollar, you could help support this podcast. You could become a silver gold producer. There you go. Yes, indeed. And uh, this will be on a completely different track. At this point, we're getting into uh, death and destruction. So apparently, you know how people say they're having an old age moment when they walk into a room and they've forgotten what they... Not they the have three of us. Me, me, Fred, and Larry don't have those. Oh, never. I do. All the time. Name was I'm not really sure what that says. <laughs> you know, it's the mileage, not the years. <laughs> that's, why, that's why they call it old timer's disease. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Now they're saying that this these these minor memory losses among the elderly may be uh, due to so-called silent strokes. That there is a uh, there's some new neurology evidence uh, from the American Academy of Neurology at Columbia, New York, that says that basically these could be the this beginning and this onset of Alzheimer's could be caused by mini strokes, just little tiny strokes that you're having throughout the day, which you don't even know that you had normally, yep. correct? Yeah, you just think you forgot something. Well, they do have these called ischemic attacks, which are what they consider mini strokes, and are actually strokes. My father had one, and it does change what you are. It does change who you are. But I, I don't yeah, know I, guess I guess a stroke is a stroke is a stroke. Tiny, tiny, tiny right. micro-strokes. Yeah, a stroke is a stroke is a stroke, ultimately, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I think I think this is frightening because if you're... You, because you won't even, you know, I mean, it's scary enough to think, you know, because I've had loved ones, you know, who sort of went down with a stroke, you know, very suddenly. And just to think that you may just be having these all day and not even know, like, that's that just blows my mind. 
Boy, the, another way that the body, you know, a lot of people, my, my husband works in cancer research and a lot of people say, oh, you know, we want to want to eliminate cancer. But, you know, the truth of the matter is we're not meant to be on this planet forever. And I think this is just another way the body's saying, like, listen, whether or not you're staying in this, I'm shutting down. <laughs> I'm ready to go. My time here is done. I think I think I was there about 30 years ago. Yeah, and you know, if it's not one disease, it's another disease. You know, there's MS, there's multiple dystrophy and all of its 10,000 different variations. There's, you know, heart problems and there's, you know, come on. So if it's not one disease, it's another. Like you said, we're just not meant to be here for an extended period of time. But apparently we're not all going to die at the same day in 2012. We're not. I thought that was uh, December 20th or something. December December 21st, 2012. Oh, it's not going to happen now? Not going to happen. NASA says it's not going to happen, and anybody who says it, they say, they, they say the, that what what's being predicted is not going to happen. The alignment of the planets isn't anywhere, and even if it did, it would have no effect on our on the, on the Earth because the Earth is only affected by two uh, by two sources: the sun and the moon. So the and Mayans the lied to us all these years. Well, it's not they've lied to us that the that the gravitational pull of the other planets are not as much of an effect as 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 it because this has happened every sixty five thousand years for the last four and a half billion years. And so we're still it, here. And we're still here. What they think and what what they think is happening is that people are misinterpreting what happened at the end of the Mayan clock. It was meant for the Mayan calendar, the Mayan year, rather than for people to interpret what they have. So it, it, it may be, it, it's just, again, we're trying to interpret something that's 2,000, 2, 3, 4, you know, 144,000 days old, and we don't understand what they were doing. We weren't there, so we're trying to interpret it through signs and through through legend and things like that, and, we're getting, and apparently we're getting it wrong because, you know, I mean, it's not going to happen, and even if it does, we're not going to know about it anyway. Yeah, and I guess you're, you hit on the thing with signs and legends. We're not necessarily, I guess, looking at written documents through all of this. We're deciphering all of these hieroglyphics and everything and trying to put this together. And all you got to do is read one of those wrong, and you set the whole... Here's your whole theory, yeah. They've had that happen. They, they've had that happen on Egyptian uh, hieroglyphs. That they've they they've misinterpreted it for all these years, and all of a sudden somebody says, "No, no, no, that doesn't mean that," and the whole story changes. Mm -hmm. We've seen it happen already. Well, and doesn't this make you wonder if this is just Y two K all over again? Well, yeah. it, oh, it, yeah. it makes you wonder if the guy just ran out of rock. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, well, they no used to make this calendar is only so large. And it was set up for 144,000 Mayan days, and it's the end of a culture. The end, you know, they, it, it's the, it's the start of a new calendar, the start of a new, just like we start our New Year's every year. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I can see, like, I mean, eventually the world is going to end, but I, I don't know, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I just feel like we shouldn't be able to predict it to like the day. Like, I think, I think, outside of a nuclear holocaust or something, the way the world is going to end, if not a nuclear holocaust or uh, an asteroid hitting us like the dinosaur type of wipeout thing, it'll be when the sun burns out in another 10 million years or something. I watched you the know, thing when on, the, uh, when the on, sun burns uh, out, then we're finished. I watched it on the Science Channel the other day talking about the inner core, the Earth spinning, and that Mars is as old as the Earth. We've been dead for three, three and a half billion right. years because the center core stopped. They said that the center core of the Earth will stop spinning in like four billion years, so let's get prepared for it now. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it because a part of me says, hey, eventually the world's going to end, so one of these people are going to be right. But on the flip side, I, I just think if we could see it that far in advance, we would have done something to stop it already. There'd be a lot more research into that if all the scientists believed it was true. There were also, there were also people who were talking about a mystery planet known as Nibru. Right. And that's spelled N-I-B-R-U. And apparently this planet Nibru hides on the other side of the sun where we can't see it, which in a, in a geosynchronous, whatever you want to call it, Earth orbit. Yeah, it's our twin. Now, wait a second, guys. We've had satellites out there. We've had exploration out there. We've gone and photographed, and there's nothing out there. And NASA will tell you there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. And if there was, why would they tell us anyway? So we can panic the streets? 
Yeah, well, I think yeah, something since, going on, they'd be getting us off this planet really quick. We'd since be, when does the government tell us everything that's going on anyway? Oh, but that's that's for a viewpoint to talk about the government. So don't forget, everybody, make sure you listen to Tony Mazzucco on Viewpoint as well, our political show. As a matter of fact, we uh, recorded an episode today, and it'll be on by the end of the week, because we're going to look back at tonight's uh, final results from the Iowa caucus, and we're going to look ahead to the next primary in New Hampshire. Hampshire. So by the end of this week, um, keep an eye out for Viewpoint with Tony Mazzucco. And this is a show you guys, if, you, if you're politically oriented, you don't want to miss it. Tony is up to date on everything, man. The man knows what he's talking about. Awesome. Well, speaking of someone who knows what they're talking about, is it time for Holly and the Lobster Tales? It's oh, yeah. that time already? Hello, Larry. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is this is always so much fun, isn't he? He's got so much enthusiasm in his voice, doesn't he, guys? Let's cheer him oh, on. Let's go, Larry. Go. Larry. Larry. Okay, here we go. For number it, one. It didn't work, guys. All right. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead, Larry. Okay. Okay. The, okay. First one is the first letter of the Japanese alphabet is the last letter. Number two. Okay. In England, when a person drinking in a pub, finished their drink and wanted another one, they would blow a whistle baked into the handle okay, which, as a way to get another drink, which led to the creation of the term, wet your whistle. Number three is, apples, not caffeine, are more effective at waking you up in the morning. Number four, it's illegal to drink beer from a bucket while sitting on a curb in St. Louis. I, I bet Holly's got an issue with the fourth one, so let's start I with think, that I one. think uh, Holly should go check that out and make sure it's true. <laughs> sure, you know, I mean, I'm sure I've got a bucket around the house someplace I could drink some beer out of. I wonder how that came about. That's my question is, you know the only reason these laws get made is there is some influx of people doing things like this that then requires them to, I mean, a, a bucket of beer is a lot of beer to drink at one time. So, but if I put beer in my Camelback and drink it out of a straw, is that okay? While well, you're sitting on a bucket, maybe. Yeah, uh, really, right? Out in the street in front of your house. <laughs> there you go. I would think a bucket would make a much better place to sit. You know, I need something with a lid. I tend to spill when I drink beer. How about beer stein? A beer bucket stein, size. you know. Oh, I, you know, that that amazes me, by the way, Larry. The one with the about the wetting your whistle, I don't understand why that ever went away. That seems like a great idea. Other than being annoying, me and Larry happened to have uh, went out to uh, toss one back for the new year last week. And while we were sitting there, he was going over his list here of these uh, lobster tails. And we were talking about that one. Now, we're sitting in this uh, establishment, and... I just said, look around, Larry. You know, if there's 50 people here, whatever there are, 50, 100 people, you know, everybody obviously isn't going to finish their beer at the same time. So it's going to be hit or miss, random, random whistles. So now if every time you were done with your beer, the whistle went off, that's going to get awful annoying after a while. So that might I mean, have been I, I've what worked, I've worked at a bar before, and I can see how that would be true, that it would be super annoying, but it would also be super effective. Oh, sure it would. No, it's a good good theory. I just, I mean, I just think it would be more annoying than what it would be worth. Well, I have to say, though, a lot more effective than apples instead of coffee. Boys, I've tried it physiologically. I just don't. Nah, give me I, my coffee. Yeah, no, I yeah, want for my coffee. All I, I, to me is make me hungry. That's all I eating. I want coffee. my coffee. If, if. That alarm clock goes up and goes off in the morning, and somebody gives me a glass of orange uh, apple juice instead of a coffee. They're going to end up wearing the apple juice. I want Correct. my coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it just gives. Larry, you, a... you drink apple juice, though, don't you? Occasionally. Does it? Not in the morning, he don't. Yeah, he no, does. Not, no, not in the morning. Well, sure. We've we've been. I've been to a Dunkin' Donuts with you, and you've had a juice instead of coffee. It doesn't. Uh, do you see any kind of effect? No. No. Okay, so that, that blows that theory out. There you go. We just did our own little uh, Mythbusters. Larry but it, says there's no difference. But it, but, it, <laughs> but, it was, but it was but it was also late in the morning. It was Ah, uh, here we morning. go. Here we go. <laughs> it was late morning. It wasn't early. Morning. Well, but that's talk. that's still morning and it's still no effect. I I don't buy it. I think I think we busted the myth. 
And so just like the Japanese writing system, it ends where it begun with Larry. Well, Fred, do you know anything about that? Because your uh, one daughter uh, is, my, knows my about daughter, Japanese. My daughter would know more than I would. Yeah, but so I don't, you, you've I don't, never I heard anything about that? I don't have a clue about that. Okay. <laughs> I think well, it's interesting, though. It's interesting anyway. So that was the four of them, Larry? That was the four of them. Well, thank you for the first Holly and the Lobster Tale of 2012. We look forward to the next one. And do we have anything else before we wrap up? My plate's clean. I am I am uh I am feeling very zen about this whole ending where we began thing. <laughs> okay, very good. So I guess we will leave it with that then. Um we'll be uh, I want to remind everybody again to look forward to this exciting new expanded schedule. As we see it will remain on Sundays. Wednesdays will be viewpoint, Friday will be the crashing glass podcast. Um, until it gets to be too much for Holly and until we do find another worthwhile permanent uh, co-host for As We See It, Holly will still be staying with us on As We See It. And she's um, always welcome on as a guest host. Absolutely. And we'll see what happens with uh, Holly and the Lobster Tales. People do enjoy that. So maybe, uh, maybe we could even get Larry the Lobster over to the Crashing Glass podcast to... Uh, entice them with their with his way of thinking every now and then as well so for the first podcast of 2012 as we see it we'll see you next sunday or actually this coming sunday we have another short week in boston i'm ed jupin in pennsylvania in the pocono mountains i'm fred boas and in st louis missouri i'm holly hurley and in brooklyn massachusetts i'm the lobster We'll see you next time, guys. Happy New Year. Night.